The House will now have under consideration House Bill Number 221. The gentleman from District 7. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, before I start into the heart of this bill, I would like to, uh, for the record, say that I have a son that is a certified teacher. I have two sisters that are certified teachers. And I in no way would introduce or support any legislation that would undermine their sacrifice that they have already made to become certified teachers. Uh, for that, uh, so I will start on the heart of the bill now. Let's oh, uh, I asked uh, unanimous consent to dispense with further reading of the bill. Uh, you've heard the unanimous consent request. Is there an objection? Hearing none, then the gentleman may open the debate on House Bill 221. Uh, <clears throat> The purpose of this legislation is to help school districts and charter schools have some flexibility to get teachers in the classroom. <clears throat> Each year we are usually about 600 teachers short of that uh, of teachers every year. Next year is expected to be worse due to the impacts of COVID. Rural schools and small charter schools may be hardest hit with this impact. House Bill 21 provides a new tool in the toolbox to get teachers in classrooms by creating a local education agency specific certification. A school district or charter may develop criteria for a teacher certificate available only to a teacher teaching in that school district or charter school. This certificate requirements must be in writing for transparency and satisfy at least the following requirements. Meet the requirements of Idaho Code Section 33, 1202, 1, 3, and 4, which state an individual must be at least 18 years old, be free from contagious diseases, and pass a criminal background check. Next, and this is important, they must have a bachelor's degree. For CTE teachers, they must have a bachelor's degree or satisfy the requirements. Idaho Code Section 3322056A regarding professional experience. The school districts or charter school is required to provide these teachers with mentoring and professional develop, and the school district or charter school may impose additional requirements. That is up to the individual schools. Regarding the career ladder, these individuals will be placed on the residency rung, and at year three, they are frozen on the third cell of the residency rung. I think that's very important to keep that in mind. The only way for an individual to advance to the professional rung is if they obtain a standard teaching certificate through traditional or alternative routes. The LEA certificate proposed in this legislation would not be transferable from one school district or charter school to another. This bill does not mandate anything. This is optional for districts and charter schools to use. Teachers in this state, they work very hard, but they cannot be in two classrooms at the same time. There is legislation out there that's been on the books for years, and I realize there's other pathways, but the legislation there obviously is not working. We need a new tool. So I guess our, our, other, our only option, unless we try something like this, is to not have a teacher in the classroom at all. Um, so. Thank you. 
Thank you, good gentleman. Is there further debate? Gentleman from 30. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to speak in favor of this bill. Most of you know that uh, I've been a teacher all my life. Um, I went through a traditional route. Um, I went through a traditional route to get certified to teach. I actually be began teaching at Bonneville High School back in 1973. Lyndon Bateman was a colleague of mine. We both taught, we both taught government and history. Um, I, I, would, I would tell you, that some people have concerns about this bill. They're afraid that people will come into our classrooms who are not qualified. I'm absolutely confident that our school administrators will bring people into the classroom who are good, outstanding folks who are qualified to teach. I think most of us who have been in the classroom clearly understand that the way we taught, especially the first year we taught, had more to do with those 16 years we had been in a classroom watching a teacher than it had to do with the professional education program through which we went. Certainly for me that was true. Uh, there really wasn't anything in my professional education classes that helped me be any better that first year um, than just having watched good teachers uh, for 16 years of my life. I think we ought to give this a chance. Folks, I think we, uh, good ladies and gentlemen, I, I think we ought to give the school districts this privilege. I think we ought to give um, many Idahoans this opportunity to come into the system. If they, if they have a desire to stay, they'll, they'll join up with one of our non-traditional routes to, uh, to get certified, uh, or they'll go back to school, um, get some professional uh, classes, and get certified through a traditional route. I, I truly believe we ought to give this a chance. Uh, local education um, organizations will hire good people. Um, there is a good chance that some of those who would come into the system this way will outteach those of us who have been there. And uh, we ought to be able to glean some of that uh, vast experience. Uh, in Idaho Falls, we have literally hundreds of scientists um, who have been at the INL for years, and my goodness, would they make great science teachers, great math teachers, inviting them in to the classroom without a lot of barriers might be the most wonderful thing we've ever done for education. I would like to say to all those teachers out there who are listening to me, this is not an anti-teacher bill. Uh, we appreciate all of you who have gone through uh, those traditional routes of becoming an educator. This won't hurt our children. It may, in fact, help all of us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Is there further debate? A uh, good lady from District 26. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and thank you from the gentleman from District 30 as well as the gentleman from District 7. Oh. Got it right. Um, there is promise in this bill. And as the gentleman from 30 mentioned, um, all of us that have been traditional route teachers have been there, and there definitely is a teacher shortage. I won't doubt that. But what we have to look at is somewhat of the data. This body just extended a year of our ABCTE programs that were originally a three-year program. We now extended it for a fourth year. We have a Grow Your Own program that we have worked very, very hard in all our districts. And we are seeing some wonderful results from that. In fact, if you looked at the data from the 2019 uh, State Department of Education, we authorized 911 certificates for teachers from alternate routes. That's adding to the system of the non-traditional teacher. We looked at the data from a task force that was created, by, again, by this body in 2012, excuse me, we have a pipeline report on teacher education on how we should help our shortage. And it was about retaining and keeping teachers in our system. 
Uh, we, have, we put this body, two years ago, put in a Teach for America program to help put teachers in our system. Again, simply a bachelor's degree, and we work with them and have them there. We have to look at the success of those programs likewise. As I said, we had 911 new certificates from alternate routes. As I spoke with the gentleman from District 7, this is a great start. I don't think the bill is done. If we talk to teachers along the way, we have requirements. There are all kinds of professional development requirements in which this bill does include, but they become part of our evaluation model. Are they going to be held accountable to that same standard? We require teachers to have the literacy competency that this body funds. We require teachers to have the math initiative that this body funds. And as we went along the way, we've cut our mentoring and professional development funds. Yes, they need to be mentored. They need to have professional development. If it's here in your heart, absolutely we need to figure out a route, and I agree. This is a nice start for our programs. But it just isn't perfected at this point as we go through. We need to talk about rural districts where this is intended. Our superintendents wear 10 different hats. I had a superintendent that says, oh yeah, I couldn't find a substitute. I was in a second grade classroom this week. Where are we going to find the time? Do we have the state, the, the staff, the funds to truly make this effective? As I said in committee, I truly do think this is a starting point, but it doesn't have the details that we need for our classrooms. The evaluation, the accountability of test scores, do we have the mentoring? We don't know that. Can we put one more hat on our local districts, truly without funding, to make this happen? And at this point, I would say, no, we're not there yet. And so with that, I'd ask for your red light. Is there further debate? Uh, jump from nine. Um, Mr. Speaker, this bill is about putting the most qualified candidate possible in the classrooms in front of the kids. Uh, right now, if you're in a little school, remote school somewhere, you'll get zero or one or two uh, applicants. Oftentimes, you look at those resumes, those two teachers that have teaching certificates have taught in five different school districts in the last five years. They got a job because they were the only app. Then they moved on, then they went on to the next district, they moved them on, they can't get along with people and kids don't learn. Okay? You got somebody in your community that can get along with people and can get kids to learn and is going to live there for a lot of years. That's who you want. As far as teachers being opposed to this, I believe the teachers will be very supportive of this because teachers are on the interviewing committees. They're going to look at these resumes. They're going to interview these people. And the teachers are going to say, we want this most qualified person. And if they get someone like this in their building, that's who they want, A, and that's who they're going to support, B. They're going to be for there for that person, help them with any kind of issues, as mentoring and so forth, uh, curriculum, teaching techniques, and uh, help them as they move on to get their credential. So I, I think this is a, a really important bill. Uh, to help at this point in time in Idaho. Is there further debate? Jump from 24. That's you, yeah. <laughs> All I heard was the four. Okay. 24. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, House Bill uh, 221 has a lot of really good features in it, and I do support it. I ask for your green light. But I want to make a couple of comments. Not everybody that wants to come into these situations is looking for a full-time, long, 25-year career as a teacher. They may be somebody just gra uh, 
retired from an occupation that they have excellent talent, excellent knowledge, and excellent experience that they would like to give back to the schools. And these small schools have some of those people in their communities that they can call on. Um, what this does, it allows the school, the local control, to say, we need to fill this position and we're not finding any uh, candidates right now. We know there's 600 some uh, uh, demand for about 600 more teachers. So how do we fill that? Do we leave it vacant? Do we fill it with a candidate that is represented from my nine represent uh, that has been through five or six school districts previously and is not working out, but they do have a, cer a certificate? Do we put that person in that classroom? This is a de local decision that will be made. These, uh, these candidates may not want to ever become a full-time, long-term certified instructor. They're happy doing that. But on the other hand, if they're not doing a good job, their fellow teachers are going to know, their principals are going to know, their superintendents or head of schools are going to know this. But in the meantime, we have to find a way to help expand this. Um, I think that this is an excellent tool out there that our schools need. And I, I want to say this also. This does not respect any existing teacher or their certification. In many respects, it honors it. It's saying if this individual wants to become a certified teacher, they've got to go through the alternate routes or go back to school and get their complete uh, certification in that process. And I want to say this other comment, that yeah, we have math and literacy standards that teachers have to take, but if you're bringing somebody in that, to teach math and they're already excellent in math, Maybe they don't need to go out and pass it. They probably could pass it anyway. But they may not need to know how to teach reading. They may only be teaching one or two classes a day in some of these schools. So it's not necessarily a full-time sort of uh, teacher. And Mr. Speaker, with that, I just ask you to support uh, House Bill 221. Thank you, good gentleman from 24. Gentleman from 15. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Teaching is a profession. Okay? The fact that you may be really smart or may have experience doesn't mean you know how to teach, doesn't mean you know how to manage a classroom and all the issues that you have to deal with with children of all different uh, situations coming into that classroom. And we confirm that people know how to teach by earning a teaching certificate. I also believe in the free market. And the way the free market solves the problem of positions that are unfilled is you offer competitive compensation to compete with the talent that is out there. And this bill is yet another bill in a series of programs that uh, the good lady from 26 listed out to avoid having to deal with the root cause problem of this, root cause of this problem, which is us not being able to attract and retain people who know how to teach by offering them competitive compensation. I'm, I'm, I, I'm voting no on this bill. I hope you do, too. Is there further debate? A gentleman from District 16. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, good ladies and gentlemen, I'm opposed to House Bill 221. This is... There have been a lot of decent things that have been said about this bill, and I do appreciate the direction that this is going. Unfortunately, this is applying a Band-Aid where heart surgery is required. We have a major teacher shortage issue, and we just never seem to address it properly and completely. Uh, this body has, uh, as has been alluded to earlier, passed uh, other alternative certification programs, uh, such as TFA. Um, just as an anecdotal story, I was able to, uh, since the bill came out of committee, I was able to speak with a rural school superintendent um, and one of the questions that I asked them was, you know, we've got all these alternative certification programs out there already. Why do we need another one? And, and especially after we had just passed uh, TFA. Um, and what was shared with me was that for the TFA program, they stay for their two years that they're committed to, and then they go on and they do something else. Um, I appreciate the noble efforts of this. This is not addressing the actual teacher pipeline shortage. Um, we've got to do more than just this. I'm going to ask you to give it your red light. Is there further debate? Joan from 29. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, some of you know my wife. She um, 
taught at a public charter school here in Idaho and then took a job with Expeditionary Learning. They're the company that offered the curriculum for the charter school she taught at at Pocatello. Um, that job took her to uh, a school in Nevada, a few charter schools in Utah, and Answer Charter School here in Boise. And she served as their um, as their uh, school designer, so she would help implement the curriculum with the school, um, help train the teachers on how to implement the curriculum, work with the administrators. In the process of doing that down in Utah, she became familiar with the program that was based, that was very similar to the one that's being proposed here. And she said the challenge that she ran into as she worked with, there were three or four charter schools there that she worked with, the quality of the candidates she worked with were were vastly different. Um, the programs that produce these candidates, these local education, uh, the LEAs, um, they weren't consistent. They had different uh, qualifications, different requirements, and as a result, the product that came from those programs was vastly different. And she said it was a real problem, the degradation of the quality of the teachers that she saw. Um, she was very concerned about it. So when she heard this, she immediately started talking to me about this program and worried about what it would do to the, the quality of teaching in Idaho. Um, and, and I, you know, I agree with the gentleman from District 16. I worry that what we're doing is we are trying to plug holes instead of fixing the wall. Um, we're trying to do this on the quick instead of saying, how do we really fix the problem that we're running into, and not just us, other states are running into trying to find quality educators to, to join the ranks of education. But making the standards easier, making it easier for local school districts who are run by volunteers on the school board and already have their hands full, their plates full, and expecting them to become the experts that our universities and other programs that are out there, both private and uh, public, um, who create these sorts of uh, qualification programs have, um, I just don't think it's realistic. Again, I think we're going to look back on this as another st step towards degrading the quality of education in this state. I think it's unfortunate, and I hope you'll consider that as you get ready to vote. Thank you. Is there further debate? Good lady from eight. <clears throat> Thank you, Speaker. Um, I am a rural Idaho representative, and um, for all the good testimony from the folks over um, behind the plexiglass. Most of you represent uh, very urban areas. And the fact of the matter is when we're looking for a calculus or an Algebra two teacher, they're not easy to find. So this puts it in the hands of the local school board uh, to where they can find the most qualified person to help them. And um, I, th I think this is very important, especially with us losing more and more teachers as time goes on. So uh, I think it's a great bill. I think it fills a definite need, and I would sure appreciate your green light. Thank you. Hmm. Is there further debate? The lady from District 18. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, to debate. Uh, on behalf of those behind the plexiglass, um, we are saying we need to pay the darn teachers. That's the solution to this problem. Pay them in rural areas, pay them in urban areas, just pay them. That's how you get qualified teachers to work, um, not by dropping our standards. Um, and so, uh, really, that's the fundamental message here, and I think that's universal to schools in urban and rural areas. We just got to pay them. Is there further debate? Hearing none? Will the gentleman from seven please stand and close the debate? I would really like to thank everybody that debated, especially the teachers in, in this body. Uh, I'll address a couple issues uh, quickly. Um, the issue of administrators was brought up, of how they play into this. Um, this bill was, was supported by the school administrators in the charter school network across the state. I have faith in our administrators not putting an unqualified teacher in the classroom. Um, and, and qualified is the key word there. Uh, my hope is that we will get members of the community to come forth 
like the good gentleman from 30 said, that are qualified in their specific area. Now, if they come in and they never thought about it being a teacher before and they experience it in the classroom, I hope that that will inspire them and motivate them to become certified. And then we have elevated, um, in a sense, our, our teachers throughout the state. Um, it might surprise you, but I'm going to agree with the good lady from 26. This is a start. That part I will agree with. If this is implemented and we give it a couple years to see how it works, I think we can get good feedback from our, our administrators and from these local school districts if it ever needs improved in any way. And again, keep in mind, each individual school district has the ability to implement more regulation, more certification if they see fit. So with that, I will end the debate and ask for your green light. Thank you. Debate is closed. The question before us is, shall House Bill number 221 pass the House? The clerk will unlock the machine and the members will record their votes. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change his vote? Clerk will lock the machine and record the vote. <clears throat> the vote count shows 54 in favor with 13 against and three absent. House bill number 221 has passed the House and will be transmitted to the Senate.